This is the Crowd Crux Crowdfunding Podcast with With Sal Sal Brigman, Brigman. where we cover everything you need to know to To launch launch a successful successful crowdfunding campaign. campaign. We speak with proven entrepreneurs who've raised money from the crowd and want to teach you how to do the same. Stay tuned because we're about to reveal how to launch your dream project with your host, Sal Brigman. Before we get started with this podcast episode, I want to take a second to introduce you to my friends at FulfillRight. If you need help shipping out your Kickstarter or Indiegogo perks or rewards, FulfillRight is the absolute best company for you. I've been working with them for a while and I can vouch for their services. They make it dead simple and take all of the headache out of shipping out all of those boxes, all of those orders to your backers and your customers. If you want to check them out, go to fulfillright.com at F-U-L-F-I-L-L-R-I-T-E dot com. What up, crowdfunders? Salvador Brigham here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. I, not YouTube, <laughs> podcast, podcast. The Crowdfunding Demystified podcast. Um, man, I'm getting confused here. We got the blog, the YouTube channel, the podcast, have content coming out every single week, new stuff, new videos every single week on the YouTube channel, new podcasts coming out. Um, so sometimes my, my brain gets a little bit confused there. But um, on this show, what we could do is we basically get into the mindset of people that are currently raising money on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, and we get into the, the traction, how they were able to garner a crowd, how they got traffic, how they got pledges, and really how they kind of um, surpassed their goal and, and how the, what they did to maintain momentum, like all these different questions you might have leading up to a campaign. I try to get answers for you by digging in deep and by asking questions to try and get these people to unveil some of their secrets, if you will, the crowdfunding secrets of the trade. Um, today, we're actually very privileged to be talking with a uh, Indiegogo campaign which has, number one, they launched a Indiegogo campaign in 2017, which raised $1.6 million on Indiegogo for the smartwatch. Um, smartwatch powered by you, the Matrix Power Watch, it's called. Uh, the second campaign, which is at the moment I'm recording this, still ongoing, they have the Matri- Matrix uh, Power Watch 2. So the Matrix Power Watch 2 basically expands on the functionality. It's way more cool, very neat looking. I urge you to go and check it out. This campaign has already raised $1.8 million on Indiegogo, and there is still about a week left to go with this project. Phenomenal success, incredible crowdfunding success. And with this interview, what I wanted to do was to get into what was the cause of that? Why is it that this project blew up? What are some of the differences there between um, you know, them deciding Indiegogo versus Kickstarter? And also getting into the crux of how this project was just so freaking you know, successful and sort of how they were able to create this, this team, this video, this brand behind it. Uh, so I think you're going to like today's video if you're looking to have like knock it out of the park a home run with your campaign and do a million dollars on indiegogo this is the episode to listen to in addition to this podcast episode i urge you to go and check out some of the other episodes i got out there i have a lot of very valuable information that guests have shared over the years I think we have now over like 200 episodes that we've done. Also check out my YouTube channel um, by Salvador Brigman. You can just type that into YouTube. You can go to my blog, crowdcrux.com. And if you want a personal coaching call with me, you want me to review your project, you want to um, have direct access to me to ask questions, to review this upcoming campaign, you can always book a coaching call with me at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. Um, like I said, I think this is going to be a really great interview for you, particularly if you um, are interested in you know launching a gadget on Indiegogo and learning a little bit about how that crowdfunding platform works. So without further ado, let's get into today's podcast episode. So Nicole, um, what, what was your role with, with this campaign? I mean, you guys have really absolutely like knocked it out of the park here. Um, congratulations. What was your role with, with this project? 
Thank you. Um, so my role at Matrix is VP of Marketing, and I work on the consumer side and on the business side as well. Um, for our campaign on Indiegogo, we started last fall in getting all of our um, assets together, um, along with our messaging. The work on the product actually started before that. It started in early as 2017 when we launched PowerWatch One, and um, what we did is we took a lot of insights from the Indiegogo community and use that for features in the next version of the Power Watch. So work on that started um, sooner and we had an idea of what we wanted to do and it was just a matter of putting all the pieces into place. And, and for those who aren't familiar, for Power Watch One, can you talk a little bit about that, what the product is and also you know where you ran this, this campaign, how, how it was launched? Absolutely. Power Watch One, we debuted on Indiegogo in 2016, and the campaign closed in early 2017. Um, Power Watch, for those who um, haven't heard of it before, um, which is probably many people, it's the world's first smart watch that you don't have to charge. It's powered by your body heat using thermoelectric technology. That's really cool. Um, yeah, you know, it's um, it's been a lot of fun because... Um, from a marketing standpoint, it gives us a lot to work with. I think the one thing that's been really successful for us with Power Watch so far is being very direct in our messaging. When we say lines like the world's first smartwatch you don't have to charge or powered by your body heat, people understand that message right away. Yeah, it's also just a really neat, like futuristic concept, honestly. Um, with this first campaign, did you also work on, on that one? I did not. So, um, the campaign closed, and then um, the team started running ads on social media um, and in other places to take pre-orders to the website, powerwatch.com. Mm -hmm. And it was around that time that I came aboard, and I was helping with those online advertising efforts. And then I came aboard as a director of consumer marketing in September of 2017. Nice, nice. So the second campaign was sort of your first experience with crowdfunding. Um, man, I think crowdfunding is a lot different than, than a traditional product launch. Like you, know, you think of a usual product that you're coming out with and people expect it to be on their door in like two days, three days. But with crowdfunding, it's kind of like more of a, you're getting the money to then go out there and create this, this product. Um, for you, like what, what was it like, um, with your first crowdfunding campaign? How did that differ from maybe some of the other marketing you've done? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it's, it's such a great, um, platform because, you can iterate and you can learn so much. Um, we're still adding stuff to our campaign page and um, we're tweaking things as we go, which you can't do when you debut a product in the quote real world. I think, you know, e-commerce in general gives you the flexibility to change things on the fly. Um, but crowdfunding in particular gives you a lot of flexibility and then you can interact directly with your community. And it's a great platform for building early supporters and those VIP backers who are going to, um, you know, really be there for you and give you valuable feedback throughout the process. Mm -hmm. So you have six days left with this campaign, the current campaign. Um, how is the Power Watch to enhanced or different or a level up from from the first one? Yeah, so we listened to the feedback from our backers and early supporters, and we worked hard to improve the technology um, inside of the watch. So with Power Watch Two, we have improved thermoelectric generators. Um, and then we also added solar cell technology. And then we have an improved boost converter too, which in short just generates more power. So we can include some features like GPS, which is extremely power hungry um, heart rate, and then a uh, color display. Mm, really? So for the people that are using this, do you tend to find that these are outdoor goers or you know, people who are hiking or running or we usually see um, most a lot of the type of people that, that like the product? Exactly. So when we look at the data, we can see that our audience, um, they're t tech adopters and their interests are in fitness. And then if we drill down more deeply, then we can see that they like um you know, some of the popular cohorts are people who like camping, they like um, running, marathons, mm. off-grid, um, you know, Ironman. There are so many different areas within fitness that we can, we're able to find our niche. And then there's the tech audience, too. Um, so those two together have been really powerful. You probably also, like, power the watch, I imagine. If you're doing all that running or you're doing hiking, like, you're getting your body heat up, you probably actually power the watch. 
Exactly. And it works best in cold climates because what the watch does is it uses your body heat and then compares it to the um, the temperature outside and uses the difference to generate power. Oh. So it would be mm-hmm. perfect right now in New York because it's freezing cold here. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. Uh, I want to get a little bit into the the strategy that you had behind this project, um, and specifically when it comes to where it was that people were discovering the product. I know you have a bit of an existing community. How you thought about the pre launch? Can you can you talk a little bit about that? How you guys structured the the pre launch for this campaign, or did you just like put it live on Indiegogo? Um, the structure was something that we pieced together from the visual assets to the copy, um, the feature set. It was a, it was work from lots of different departments and matrix and departments were, you know, small companies. So basically a few of us, um, CEO, CTO, we have, um, you know, our product team, which is pretty small, um, our firmware team, which is, um, small also, um, but mighty of course. And, um, we have some designers that we work with too. So it was really everybody working together, doing their best work aligning. and working together. Exactly. And a lot of revisions. So with some of the smaller details, you know, we were at CES in January and um, we announced it on Sunday the 6th. And I was like on the floor, um, sitting on the floor in one of the in like the the hall in the casino floor in Venetian, making updates to the Indiegogo page. <laughs> I'm sitting up against a casino, uh, um, excuse me, a slot machine, and making changes um, um, tethered to my phone just on the fly because mm. things were changing so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was really a matter of bringing everything together, um, especially the video. That one took some time because we wanted the script to be right. We did oh, a I lot bet. of iterations on that. It's mm-hmm. it's extremely high quality too. Um, you know, so let's, let's talk a little bit also about like, did you guys do any like email list building at all before you went live or did you just kind of like rely on this big organic following that you had from the first project? We did. So we, on powerwatch.com, we added an email sign up to the website, um, in 2017 and we're able to collect almost a hundred thousand emails that way. Wow. And yeah. And we, you know, we can segment them. So we're able to see, um, we can target, we don't want to spam anybody's inbox. So we're caught, we are really careful to be sure that we're not sending emails to people who, um, have already purchased a watch or, and, you know, when people who have purchased a watch, we want to be sure, um, especially moving forward to, as we build our marketing efforts out to talk to those people, um, and give them pointers for the watch and build a community around that. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the top of the funnel, we started building it, um, in 2017. And then all of last year, we're able to fill it. We were driving traffic to powerwatch.com through advertising and a little bit of, um, growth hacking, some PR. And, And with all these efforts, that traffic, we were able to not only get people to the site and encourage them to convert and purchase a power watch, but at the very least have another KPI of collecting their email address. Mm-hmm. And then we had that list to work with when it came time for launch of power watch too. So can I ask you a dumb question? What, what do you mean by growth hacking? Like, what is that? Yeah. So it can mean many things. I know it's a buzzy term. Um, really for us, it can, it's a couple of things. It's reaching out to bloggers and influencers um, as a bootstrap startup, you want to, your marketing dollars are limited. So you want your efforts to be fruitful, right? You want to mm-hmm. be as tactical as you possibly can. So we created lists of bloggers, not, we were reaching out to, um, you know, the, the media, uh, we have a PR firm that helps us with that and they're very, very good. And we also wanted to reach out to, um, more, we wanted to take a long tail approach also, so we created lists of people who run popular blogs in tech and fitness, some style also, fashion, lifestyle, uh, wellness, and we reached out to them and we said, hey, you know, we have this product, Are you, you know, would you be interested in writing about it? And we were able to generate some coverage that way. Ooh, cool. We also, yeah, and you know, we didn't really go into forums as much as we could have. I know some people will 
post on Quora, you know, and then they'll answer, they'll have like the CEO answer the question. We didn't do anything like that. But in terms of growth hacking, you can do a lot of stuff like that where it's just a, a matter of like infiltrating communities where your audience hangs infiltrating. out and spreading that's the good word. word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's a really good word. Um, I got to steal that one. But when it comes to like, uh, you know, basically doing this, this whole marketing strategy and getting people on your list, were you offering like a free watch or were you just saying like, hey, we're, we're coming out with a new Indiegogo. You can subscribe here if you want to be notified or like how, what was the ask there to get them on the list? The ask was for um, for the for the bloggers or for, for, the for ads, Sorry. like for if you're running an ad to gather the emails for your newsletter. Like, were you saying, hey, we're coming out with a new Indiegogo campaign, you can click here to enter your name and email? Or was it like, hey, we're going to give you a free smartwatch? Like, what were you doing to get them on the list? I had to interrupt this podcast episode because I want to introduce you to my friends at The Gadget Flow. Their product discovery platform reaches 22 million people per month. They've helped more than 5,000 crowdfunding campaigns thus far and they have a social media following of more than 700,000 followers. If you want to gain access to their marketplace and list your own product, you can go to thegadgetflow.com slash submit and list your project today. You know? Yeah. So for the email newsletter sign up we did at powerwatch.com, we let people know that it was basically – um, an email address in exchange for news and updates. We didn't offer anything for free until we launched Power Watch 2. And then we had a giveaway where in exchange for your email address, you're entered to win a Power Watch 2. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. I've, so I've heard mixed things on the giveaway. I'm not sure what your experience uh, with it was, but I've heard that a lot of the times when you do a giveaway, it can actually decrease the value of that email. So you might get a lot of emails, but they're not necessarily converting. What did you find to be your experience with that? That's, yeah, that's a really good one. We, um, we haven't done very many giveaways with Power Watch 1. We're going to be doing more with Power Watch 2. Um, so I'll have to get back to you on that. Okay, cool. So aside from that, you were building basically your email list, you're doing outreach to bloggers. Uh, how far in advance did you basically tell people, Hey, we're going to be launching a new product or campaign. Was this like two weeks in advance or like months in advance? It was probably two weeks in advance where we put up the power watch to website and we didn't drive very much traffic to it until, we started to drive traffic to it a week or two before, but it was over the holidays. It was at the end of December. It was very quiet. Um, a lot of this was because we didn't really, we were just flying by the seat of our pants, trying to get everything ready for the launch and getting ready for CES. So um, it was one of those things where everything came together at the last minute and it came together well, but we didn't do anything pre-launch outside of Power Watch 2, which was a good, you know, it was a really good approach because we were able to um, have a few people pick up on it and say mm -hmm. on social media, hey, you know, something's going on here. And people are like, oh, okay, like this is interesting. But we didn't want to generate a lot of buzz until the watch was officially announced and the Indiegogo page was live. Yeah, yeah, because you want to make sure that at that time, also, when people are excited and expecting something and really looking forward to it, then you can then deliver on that. So if you get them excited too soon, then it kind of like, you know, fizzles out a little bit. So I can I can see where the timing would come in there. Um, I have a lot of people who will, you know, ask me questions about, hey, Sal, like, Indiegogo looks cool, but like, isn't Kickstarter a bigger platform? Or would you recommend that I launch on Indiegogo or Kickstarter here? What, what was your thinking there? Like, why is it you guys have, you had a really successful project with, with both of these. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like Indiegogo versus Kickstarter? Um, you know, I think both are, are, you know, really great. Um, they each have their pros and cons, I think, depending on what you want to do. Um, Personally, I've never run a campaign on Kickstarter, so I can't really speak too much to it. But I can say for us, Indiegogo was the right move for Power Watch 2 because our community is there. And our, our community is very important to us. They've been really great with Power Watch 1. We had all kinds of issues with shipping and fulfillment and uh, manufacturing because we didn't, we weren't prepared. We didn't, 
um, have a lot of things in place that we need, we should have had in place. So there were a lot of um, shipping delays as a result of that. And the community was right there with us. And there's still improvements that we can make along the way. So that was the number one reason we stayed on Indiegogo was because of that community. When you have those things come up and you have like a shipping delay or you have something wrong with the manufacturing, it's like, oh, gosh, we got a problem here. How do you deal with that? Like, are you just super transparent and like upfront or do you try to communicate like expectations? Or like, how do you deal with that? We, yeah, that's a really good one. That one, we were as transparent as we could be um, on email, social media, we wanted, and on Indiegogo, of course, we were sending weekly updates. Um, people are still going to be angry, but we just did the best we could in terms of being as transparent as possible. Um, I think that's the best approach because things are going to go wrong in the process. And rather than go radio silent, which I think is the worst thing you can do, especially on a crowdfunding campaign where people, some people don't know that the product might not come to fruition, right? It's, it's a reality with crowdfunding. True. Um, some of these products are never produced. Um, for us, it was going to get produced, but we, you know, we wanted to let our community know that we were on it and we were doing the best that we could. So it was tough. It was really tough. We, um, you know, we'd sit down every Monday and craft the update we would send to everyone. And we were prepared. You know, the sentiment on our Facebook page went down. People were really upset because a lot of people after the crowdfunding page or excuse me, after the crowdfunding campaign concluded, then we started taking pre-orders at PowerWatch.com. And those consumers were a different audience. They didn't know the realities of crowdfunding. They expected mm. to receive their product right away. So <laughs> those people got really mad. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really challenging. We hired – this was when – we hired a, a full-on customer service team, and we got organized. We set up Zendesk. We um, started weekly CS meetings, and it's sort of when we became a real company on on that side of things. When we set up all the departments, and we were like, "Okay, now it's it's go time. We have to deliver on this." And there was never any question that we wouldn't. But you know, with the c customers there and ready and eager, and leaving comments and feedback and just letting us know that they were, you know, they were eager They're to receive their yeah. product. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was definitely a race, but we did it and, and we're really proud of it. We learned a lot in the process and with power watch too, we're ready. Um, you know, the guys, have, yeah, the, the systems in place, the systems are in place. Yeah. And we made sure in the video, um, we address it and in a few other places where it's like, look, we learned a lot the first time around. We couldn't have done it without our community and, and now we're ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we learned a lot. Totally. Um, I think it's kind of just like a growing up period when you kind of have to become adult. Like you have to go from being a bootstrap startup to being like, oh, hey, we actually now have to have regular meetings. Hey, we have to actually have these systems in place. We have to do customer service. Like all the stuff that kind of worked when you were like a nimble startup. Now you actually have to get a little bit more serious about like organization building and all of those really boring topics. Um, and it's kind of just, I think, a stage that a company goes through, you know, Um so I have, I have a few more questions for you, but I was just kind of curious, uh, you coming from like a traditional marketing background and now being hit with a crowdfunding campaign, something you've never done before, all these new expectations, all these new different terms you have to know and such. Um, how have you grown personally when it comes to being a marketer? What have you learned? Like, I would just love to hear um, also what you enjoyed most about the process. Oh, well, I think... Crowdfunding is really fun because there's so much that you can do with it and aligning everything, all the teams for something that's so timely, right? You have 30 days. That is something I've never done before. I've, I've worked on many launches, but there's nothing like this where you launch something that's new to the market and and you're aligning a lot of things before, which, you know, you're going to do with any launch. But I think crowdfunding with perks and thinking through pricing and thinking through all the details of what we want to be communicating to people in our FAQ and working on the update cadence, that was really unique. And I think that's part of what makes crowdfunding so special. Um, updating, the, the going in there to update the perks, there's something about it that is just so much more transparent than having an e-commerce site mm -hmm. um, it moves so fast 
and you can iterate so quickly. You can change out images. You can do whatever you need to do um, to include more information, what you think will be the most valuable. We at, When we added packaging images, that was that felt really nice to be able to just keep like keep giving the community more things to look at. Um, and still, you know, you're under the gun because you only have so many days left in the campaign. But I think that ability to be talking directly to the community that's there is is really great because in e-commerce, you don't know. <laughs> mm, yeah, true. <laughs> you don't know who's going to be visiting your page. Did, did you have any surprises with this Power Watch 2 campaign? Things that came up or maybe people claiming a perk that you didn't expect? Do you have any surprises at all? Um, no, I don't, everything's been pretty, you know, I think it's been pretty straightforward so far. We haven't received anything too out of the ordinary. I haven't been very much in the weeds in terms of a lot of the incoming requests we're receiving. I wish I had some more unique stories I could share with you on that, but it has been, it's been pretty smooth. I have to say the Indiegogo community um, has been awesome in terms of like the people at Indiegogo. Mm. Um, they've been really helpful when we email them. We started talking to them, um, late last year about this campaign and they were so helpful in giving us best practices, just tips and tricks. And, and they put us on the homepage of Indiegogo.com. So working with those guys has been awesome. Um, yeah, but nothing, nothing out of the ordinary that I can think of. Everything's been pretty straightforward. I have heard that from from many other campaign creators that the actual community there, the the team of people, the staff at Indiegogo are just ridiculously helpful, and they also are, are really business minded. I think like they're willing to to work with you, being like, "Hey, if you do this and this, maybe we can put you in the newsletter, or like maybe we can help get you some more traffic and such." Um, so I've also heard that from from other creators there. And I, did you get into any like the newsletters at all that they they send out? Yeah, the team at Indiegogo has been awesome. We got into a newsletter and we were on the homepage of Indiegogo for a week. They've been awesome. I think that like that that business mind that they have and just like being able to leverage their team for best practices has been super helpful for us. I want to talk a little bit about your your pitch video. Uh, and I know you put a lot of thought and a lot of attention into creating a video that's compelling one that you know maintains attention and such. And one of the things that you, you sent to me was that thinking about how to convey a brand story to a potential backer. And I kind of want to ask you, what, what do you mean by a story? Because I think we throw that word around, like you're supposed to tell a story, you're supposed to have a brand story, but no one really knows what that means. Um, what, what exactly do you mean? Like, how do you tell a brand story? I'm speaking to the crowdfunders in the audience who have already launched a Kickstarter campaign We've actually even successfully run a campaign. And the reason is, I think you will understand this pain point most. And that is, when you finally do raise money on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, the hardest part is not collecting the cash. The hardest part is shipping out all of those perks and rewards to your backers. It is a nightmare, my friends. It's a lot of spreadsheets, it's a lot of headache, and it's a lot of stress. That's why I recommend BackerKit. If you have not heard of BackerKit, they help you collect surveys, they help you collect data, and the entire fulfillment process is just so much easier and so many less spreadsheets when you use their software. You can check them out at backerkit.com and use CrowdCrux for a special discount. So, yeah. Um, I asked you questions. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. And I, I love talking about this because... Um, this is what I love to do. And, I, I, you know, waxing philosophical about marketing uh, is something that we don't really do enough. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it really it starts with your company's mission. Um, for us, we want to change the way consumers power their wearables. Um, being able to start with something like that and build on it has been what we've been able to do over the last couple of years successfully. And we think we do a good job of telling it, you know, with the power watch one video, we started very broad. We started with the story of all the waste heat in the world and recapturing that. And here we narrow it down a little further and we, we touch on it, but we're really talking about the energy of you and being able to power um, consumer electronics. So we're narrowing it down a little bit, um, but I think that future story is something 
people can really grab onto when you say things like imagine a world where without any cables or chargers or batteries, um, identifying that sort of story is one that people understand and that's, it's done well for us. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. It's almost like you're focusing more on that, that mission rather than the actual like features and functionality at first of the product. Um, which is really interesting, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it helps us, it helps to orient the user in, you know, a world where attention is scarce, just being able to grab somebody's attention with that story, something that they can understand right away. And then going into here's the, the power watch and which is out to solve this problem. You know, here's the problem we're out to solve. Here's our mission. And here's where we come in and help solve the problem and present an option for everlasting power um, and then go into the details after we have their attention rather than go into it right away. Um, I, yeah, it's a delicate balance because you want to, you don't want to go too far into it. Um, but you also want to be sure to, that they understand. Um, and that's, that's going to be a challenge for us when we go to retail too. Um, power watch is at retail, but we want to expand a bit this year. So thinking through when, our watch is on a shelf next to other smartwatches out there, how we differentiate ourselves in a way that people can understand right away. Totally. The, the other thing I like about your video is how you show people using the watch in different environments and different types of people. And I think that the whole storytelling component, it's kind of almost like getting a user to think how this would fit into their life and where they would use the products. So when I see, you know, someone running through the snow, having this power watch, or I see people, you know, using this in their daily life, or they're, you know, doing different things, that kind of is like, oh, okay, so I'll use it here, or like, I could imagine myself using it here. And that's sort of, I also think, tells the story a bit. Yeah, exactly. We wanted to exaggerate it. So the point would, would really hit home. And yeah, speaking of cold weather, that was, it was freezing that day. We were at Lake Tahoe, and it was like 30 degrees all day, no heat. And I mean, our, um, uh, our actor Marlon, he did an amazing job. I don't know how he <laughs> hung in there all day for, you know, eight hours of shooting, but he did it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's exactly it is being able to sort of put the product in the environment where it'll be used. And then for marketing, you want to exaggerate it a little bit. So it really hits home with, with the viewer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely think it's it's one of those things that's you know not focused on enough is basically showing where you can use this product and you know who's using it and such and just to kind of like so someone knows oh, okay this is for me and it kind of just captures your attention a bit there. Um, when, when it comes to like the different sources of where people were discovering you, so Indiegogo, it seems like you had a bunch of backers there. I mean, you guys have what, like over 7,000 backers. That's, that's incredible. Um, yep. from, you know, your newsletter, did you do any ads while you were live with the project? Yep. Yep. We ran ads. Um, we're still running ads. We did a lot of press at CES. That was a big one for us. And, um, you know, Indiegogo showed us a lot of love in their marketing materials, uh, and we did some retargeting on Google. So I think those things helped. Um, we did a newsletter blast to our list and, uh, we drove traffic from powerwatch.com, which, you know, we still are of course. Mm. So I think those things all helped and we see, we received some inbound requests, um, from people who saw some of the write-ups about PowerWatch two in various CES pieces here and there. So that's been really nice. Uh, also people from all over the globe. So, um, well, you know, uh, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I mean, it's I think it's it's almost been like, in that way, international and spreading. And I just want to say congratulations to all of your success. Um, you guys are, are doing awesome. You have six days to go. Where can people go to learn more about the watch and also any of the other updates you have coming later? You can go to powerwatch.com. We're on Indiegogo. Um, and powerwatch.com will take you there. Um, or you can, you know, go to Indiegogo and we're um, and do a, a quick search. And about Matrix, you can um, learn more at matrixindustries.com. Great. Well, if you guys are doing another campaign, we got to have you back. 
um i wish you a lot of success and no no uh, headaches with your fulfillment phase hopefully this time and that things go smoothly thank you very much let me tell you about our latest sponsor send pro online by pitney bows shipping can be complex things can get really confusing really fast with send pro online it's easy to save time and money no matter what you send from letters and packages to overnights and flats you can easily compare usps ups and fedex in an all-in-one online tool you can print shipping labels and stamps directly from your printer. You can even track all of your shipments and get email notifications when they've arrived. SendPro Online is only $14.99 a month and listeners can get a free 30-day trial when you visit pb.com slash crowdcrux. That's pb.com slash crowdcrux. Experience the convenience of SendPro Online for yourself when you sign up for a free 30-day trial. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Crowdfunding Demystified Podcast. If you did not catch it, my name is Salvador Brigman. Hope you enjoyed today's podcast episode. You got a glimpse of what a million dollar Indigo campaign looks like, a seven figure crowdfunding campaign, and have a little bit of inspiration there to go out there and maybe try your own. Um, to try, you don't necessarily have to raise a million dollars. I have so many different success stories on this podcast that people every single day, um, I'm literally cataloging it with this show in the archives of this show, people raising six figures, people raising five high figures, people raising a million dollars or more with multiple campaigns. So it's really something for everyone. That was kind of my goal in starting this show was I wanted to get into the the heads of people that are currently entrepreneurs out there and creative types that are raising money successfully with crowdfunding and show you that because I think all the times we might see like a Kickstarter campaign or an Indiegogo campaign raise a bunch of money. But the question is, what is happening behind the scenes, dude? Like, what are these people actually doing to make that thing happen? And that was my, my whole goal with the show was to unearth these sort of nuggets of gold for you so you can take some of these strategies, take some of these tips and apply it to your project. You know, the, the way that I do these podcasts, um, they're obviously free for you to listen to and for you to, to hunt through for these different tips. If you'd like something more of like a step by step kind of a plan. If you'd like more of a, um, just to hear from the horse's mouth, if you will, what you have to do to be successful with Kickstarter. I obviously have a lot of different stuff out there, but um, one of the books that people have been, you know, it's actually becoming sort of resurging a lot more popular. And also I've been getting more messages about this is the, the ebook that I have out there called Tricks for Launching a Kickstarter Campaign. Tricks for Launching a Kickstarter Campaign. This is actually a private book. So, you know, I have some books out there on like Amazon and stuff. Um, so I'm going to pull this up for you. But basically what I do with this book is I went out there and I interviewed people who have successfully uh, launched campaigns and I interviewed them and I sort of got into what actually worked for their different campaigns. And then I sort of, on top of that, provided my own advice as to how to run one. So this is kind of a good intro um, educational product for you. If you don't know what you're doing and you kind of want to just want like a quick distilled um, understanding of how to be successful on Kickstarter, this is tricks for launching a successful Kickstarter campaign. If you want to check it out, you can go to crowdcrux.com slash ebook. That is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X.com slash ebook. And you'll be able to look into more of these tricks for launching a successful Kickstarter campaign. Like I said, I've been having a lot of great people. This is one of my best-selling um, eBooks that I've, I've put out. And it's, it's really um, also one of those things where my goal, of course, for you is to be successful with crowdfunding, but I don't think you have to necessarily invest, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars and tons and tons of time to figure this all out. I want to speed up the process. I want to make it budget friendly and I want to bring this to you and execute on it. So one day you can also come back onto my show and you can benefit from that. If you want to sort of speed up the process even more and do a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me, where I review your project, we get into what you have to do, what you're doing right, the, you know, give you some feedback there. If you have a pitch video already, we can even just get into the steps that you need to take, um, the resources you should be looking into. If you want to hire an agency, we can talk about that. Um, and you can also talk about some of the other stuff that I provide. So if you're interested in that, you can book a coaching call with Sal, with me, by going to crowdcrux.com slash coaching. That is C-R-O-W-D-C-R-U-X dot com slash coaching. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this, this podcast. It's people like you supporting the show that make this so much more rewarding for me and to get all of the messages and comments is also really rewarding to see on my YouTube channel and my different, um, you know, mediums there and such. It just means a lot. So I appreciate that a lot and, um, we'll have to see you next time.